Vu 3, Lesson 2, Teleportation Portals. Is it as cool as it sounds? Honestly, yeah. So let's just dive right in. We're going to go to app.vu and we're going to replace Hello World with a click to teleport component. Completely replacing Hello World and actually removing our Hello World component altogether. Then we're going to create our new click to teleport.vu component. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a button that we can click that will trigger a teleportation of a specific piece of HTML or Vue um, logic or template. And we're going to teleport that to in our index.html to this element with an ID of portal that is outside the scope of our virtual Vue DOM. And so we're going to say teleport to and then reference that element's ID. Next, we're going to say inside of our teleport, we're going to say V of open, and then we're going to give it a style of portal.full. We'll get to that in a second. We're also going to add this model class, and then we're going to give it a slot, and then we're going to add some of this other functionality that allows us to actually close our model, close our portal. Okay. Now, first, let's give our component a name, click to teleport. Next, let's create our data. We're going to say, let's just by default say our teleportation portal is not open. Next, we're going to create this portal. We're going to call it full, like full screen. And we're actually going to define our style within our um, portal.full object. Now, remember, we referenced that above, style portal.full. Inside our portal, we're going to define a model. And we're actually going to make that model agnostic. It's going to just populate whatever portal it finds itself in. To make this a bit easier, we're going to actually import the Tailwind CSS library via the CDN link. You can find that below in the description. Then to make our model class automatically populate whatever portal it's in, we're going to add that CSS. Now, we don't actually need the model close button class, but we are going to just create a generic um, style or CSS layout that every single button will inherit just to make it a little, a little prettier. All right. Now, once we have our buttons defined, and again, there is a GitHub repo link below. If you don't want to copy all of this, um, we're pretty much done with the CSS, but you can find all of that in the GitHub. All right, so now that we're done with the CSS, let's go back, remove our logo from app.vu, and test the baby out. And la la, it works. But what's going on? Well, we are literally just teleporting all of the content within our teleport component, which is a global Vue 3 component, and we're just appending it to the element with an ID of portal. Because it has a slot, we can put any generic information in there. More than that, we can keep changing that, but we can actually remove the element ID of portal, and we can just say, hey, make the portal the HTML element of body. We don't need to actually add the element with an ID of portal, we can just say teleport to the body and we'll append whatever content is within that teleport portal to the very end of our body element tag. More than that, what if we want to create like a left drawer sliding sidebar or something? Well, let's just change that. Instead of saying, hey, the style for this portal is full, let's just say it's left. Now we have a left sidebar. And then if we want to go back to full, we can just change it and say, hey, the style is full. And we can keep going and we could even say like right sidebar. And then we just have to change a little bit of the position in the CSS. And now we have a full model. But if we go back up and we change the portal, we reference right, it's a right sidebar. And we could keep going with this. So what if we wanted to add like top dot right? We wanted to just do the same thing, position fixed, top zero, Z index 10, 
background color, light gray. And then we're just gonna say the bottom is 50 view height and a few other attributes. Now we can just say style portal is top right. Now we have a top right portal. And of course the content is dynamic, but we could even go a step further and make this more dynamic and just simply add a prop in that says two. We'll just say props and then two. And now portal two, well, we can define where portal's at by the prop. So now we can do like top right, we could do top, we could do full, we could do left, we could do right. But if we do top left and that doesn't exist, what do we get? Yeah, we get this warning, but it's not a very good bug. So let's go back into our click to teleport and let's use a different syntax for our props that actually has a validation. Using this object syntax, we can say, okay, the default is going to be full and the validator is going to say, hey, whatever the prop value is, it has to be in that array. And now we get a lot more uh, focused error. It says, hey, the prop is invalid. More than that, though, we can make this a longhand function and we can say, okay, if full top right, right, left, that includes two, just return true. It passes the validator. And then we could just say allowed teleport location and we could just make that array. And then we can say if that includes the two prop, return true. Otherwise, we can create an explicit pair. Within this explicit air, we can just say console.air and then we can just, you know, write whatever we want to write. And then we can actually console.air the available or the allowed um, to teleport locations, the allowed props, and then we'll return false. So now we get the exact air and the valid options we can pass through. And we'll just change that up just a little bit, make that cleaner, make sure it's all on the screen. Um, and then we are good to go and we get a very solid air and it tells us exactly what it is. It's red. It stands out. It's no longer a warning. We get the exact options, but there's still one last little problem. If we go up here and we do top left and then we also have top left now and we forgot to update our validator array, it'll work, but we still get the warning and the air is our validator fails even though the functionality works. So we could of course just add top.left there and then our validator passes, but that's not good dependency management. We don't want to have to remember to update that in two places. So what we can do is we can refactor the portal outside the scope of our view components. And then we can just say, let allowed equals object.keys for our portal and then actually we can get rid of allowed altogether. And we can just say object.keys for our portal includes two, then return true. Otherwise, we can just say console.air and then the object.keys. So anytime we add a new portal, it'll automatically update our validation and our validation error message. And so even though in the short run, this is a little more complicated to get set up, in the long run, we basically don't have to touch this anymore. So that makes it a lot better. All right. So once that's set up, now we can reload our page and we don't get our errors. And of course, if we add anything and we, we just, we don't have to worry about updating the same dependency and they more than a single place. All right. So what happens if we use multiple portals because they're all trying to portal to the same element, right? Well, it actually works. It'll actually inject every single piece of teleport content in order that you open it to the end of whatever element the portal is trying to teleport the content to. In this case, it's body. 
And so if we want to actually create a different component for every single one of our possible portal locations, we can open every single one of them. And we'll just go full, full model content. So now we can see all of our buttons right there. We can actually open all of our portals. And it will just keep appending or injecting them at the end of whatever the element is that we're teleporting our content to. The last thing I want to do is if you notice, all of our buttons are the same, which makes it kind of confusing. So let's just add another prop. We'll call it label. And this way, we can actually define our uh, portal button. So whatever the button is that moves the content or sends the content, we can now just say, hey, it's dynamic. Make it a label. And then we'll add a prop. And that prop is going to default to just open. And otherwise, we'll just get whatever we pass in as our label prop. And so now we have different portal buttons with different locations. And they're all explicitly different. And of course, if you don't have any label, it will default to open. All right. The last, last thing outside of refactoring at the end is you can actually put components in components. And just as a quick example, you could actually put the teleport buttons inside of each other. So you can actually open up a portal from an open portal, which is kind of crazy to think about. So. The last thing we're going to do is we're just going to refactor this teleportation portals into its own section. So we're going to create a sections directory here in a second. Um, we're just going to give it a title and then we're going to add a flex box around them just to beautify it a little bit. And this is just so we're cleaned up for our next lesson when we cover multiple V model bindings. And so all we're going to do is right there, flex box, throw a horizontal. We're going to add margin right to margin left to within our click to teleport view, give them some space. And then da, 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 maybe a BR, HR, BR, rounded shadow. Maybe give it a shadow extra large. I don't know. Just trying to make it look kind of pretty. Uh, and then, yeah, they all still work. So now let's just create a new directory, call it sections, and we're going to call this teleportation.view and teleportation portal. Um, we'll rename that back to teleportation in a second just to keep it lined up with GitHub. We're going to move that entire section right here, wrap it in its own template, and then we, of course, are changing that back to teleportation.view, and then we're going to name it just teleportation. After that, we're going to import click to teleport and we have to change the path to dot dot to go up and then back down into components and then use the components. All right. Next in app.view, we're going to import that teleportation section. And now we just have that teleportation section cleaned up and out of the way so we can use app.view for our next lesson. Simple.